welcome back to the class on ethical mysteries in this lecture we are going to discuss about the similarities between the transformer and a dexmo so before going to enter into the this lecture let me discuss the some of the topic on the parameters of a rotor of induction motor how do you find the rotor current at a standstill the per phase rotor voltage at a standstill condition equal to e2 the per phase rotor impedance at a standstill condition that we have to take this z2 that is equal to square root of rr square plus x2 square where rr is nothing but a per phase rotor resistance at a standstill condition x2 is nothing but a per phase rotor leakage reaction at a standstill condition per phase rotor current at a standstill condition equal to i2 so that is equal to e2 by square root of r2 square plus x2 square now we are going to calculate the rotor current in a running condition the per phase rotor voltage in a running condition er equal to s into e2 the per phase rotor impedance in a running condition zr equal to square root of r r square plus x r whole square already we know that x r equal to s into x2 if you substitute the s into x2 in place of x r then you are getting this expression square root of r r square plus s into x2 whole square now the per phase rotor current in a running condition ir equal to E R by square root of R R square plus X R square. This is equal to S into E two divided by square root of R R square plus S into X two whole. Now we are going to find out the rotor power factor. The rotor power factor at a standstill condition is equal to. This is the impedance diagram of a rotor at a standstill condition. This vector is nothing but a R R. This is nothing but a. This vector is nothing but a X two. This vector is nothing but a. Square root of R R square plus X two square. This angle between these two vectors are nothing but theta two. So cos of this angle is nothing but the rotor power factor at a standstill condition. That is equal to from this triangle cos theta t equal to R R by square root of R R square plus X two square. Next rotor power factor in running condition equal. This is the impedance triangle of a rotor in running condition. This, again, this is R R. There is no change in the magnitude of R R, but X R equal to S into X two. Per phase rotor leakage reaction is highly depending on slip-on induction motor. That is equal to S. The phasor sum of these two is nothing but a square root of R R square plus S into X two whole square. The rotor power factor cos theta theta R equal to R R by square root of R R square plus X R square. This is equal to R R by R R square plus S into X two whole square. In this manner, we can calculate the rotor power factor at a standstill condition as well as the running condition. Now we are going to see the what is the similarities between the induction motor and the transformer. First, let me start with the transformer. This is the core. This is the primary winding where we apply the voltage. This is the secondary winding where we can we are going to connect the load. So whenever we apply the voltage to the primary winding. This transformer will be taking current of five volts. The current is nothing but a no load current. When all this current is passing through the primary winding, the flux will be creating from the primary winding that is linking with a both primary winding as well as the secondary winding. In this manner, it is passing in the core. There is some amount of flux is leaking from the and linking with the own turn. This flux is nothing but a primary leakage. Now, if we connect a load across the Secondary winding. Now the secondary winding is supplying a current through the load. When our current is passing through the secondary winding, again the flux is creating from the secondary winding. That is opposes the very cause to produce it. Here the very cause is the this flux. So it sets a opposite flux, primary flux. So the resultant flux in a transformer core will be decreasing. To compensate that one, the primary will be taking a More amount of current that we represented with a I2 dash. When our this current is passing through the primary winding, again the extra flux will be creating from the primary winding that is opposes the secondary flux. So the net flux in a core is the constant. So in this manner, even though if you apply the load on the secondary winding of a transformer, the flux in a core is the constant. Here the important parameter is the V1 is the voltage applied to the primary winding. The mutual flux is linking with the both primary winding and secondary winding. 
so there is a voltage induced in primary winding as well as secondary winding that we can take it as e1 primary winding e2 nothing but a mutually induced voltage in secondary winding that we are taking at secondary winding v2 is nothing but a voltage across the low this current is nothing but a i2 the secondary leakage flux that we represented with a the secondary winding has some amount of the leakage reactor the same manner from the primary winding also the some amount of flux will be leaking that we are representing with a primary leakage reactor apart from that these two windings also consisting a resistance that we are representing with a r1 and r2 r2 is nothing but a the resistance of the secondary winding so now the primary winding has a two parameters one is the winding resistance another one is the leakage reactor the same manner the secondary winding also has a two parameters that is the winding resistance second one is the leakage reactor in a primary there are two voltages are there one is the applied voltage another one is the self induced voltage in a primary winding due to the mutual flux the secondary again the two voltages are experiencing one is the mutually induced voltage in secondary winding that is the e2 v2 is the voltage across the load here what is the important point what you have to remember is that because of the mutual flux there is a voltage in primary winding and secondary winding the angle between the flux and induced voltage always 90 degree. that voltage lags the flux by 90 degree so in this manner whatever the load is applied on the secondary winding the extra current will be taken by the primary winding to supply the load power at a second the same exact thing will be happening in induction motor also if we come to the induction motor this is a three phase supply this is stator winding the stator winding is consisting a three phase winding which is displaced by 140 degrees in space this is the rotor this is a shaft and the rotor also there is a conductor so there those conductors are nothing but a rotor bars or rotor wind whenever we are giving a supply to the stator winding the constant rotating flux is creating from stator winding that we represented with a with three red lines it is running with a speed of ns so when this flux is rotating in a space there is a rate of change of flux in case in a rotor bars as well as a stator bars also so there is a self induced voltage in a stator winding similar to the self induced voltage in a transformer that is opposes the supply voltage there is a mutually induced voltage in a rotor winding because of the rotating flux there is a mutually induced voltage in a rotor winding so whenever the voltage is induced in rotor bars those are short circuited which are circulating current through the rotor bars when the current is passing through the rotor bars again the flux will be creating from the rotor bars that is opposing the main flux this is the main flux this is rotor flux so that is opposing the main flux the net flux in air gap of induction motor will be decreased how exactly happen transformer the similar manner it is also happening in case of a induction motor to compensate that one the stator of induction motor will be taking extra current from the supply that we are calling as a ir dash so whenever the stator winding is taking extra current the flux is creating from the stator winding that exactly opposes and equal to the rotor flux the net flux in air gap is constant in case of a induction motor similar to the the net flux in a transformer is constant here this is the stator flux this is the rotor flux these two last two lines are the rotor flux that is opposite the stator flux these two lines again these two lines of flux is creating from the stator winding to compensate the rotor flux the net flux in a air gap of induction motor is a constant that is in a rotating nature now all these fluxes are rotating at a synchronous speed only stator flux rotor flux the extra flux which is creating from the stator also will be rotating at a synchronous speed in this case now come to the stator winding the stator winding has a two parameter one is the stator resistance another one is the the some amount of leakage flux is there 
that is linking with the own term that we showed here with the red line so the nothing but a leakage term how exactly there is a primary wind as well as secondary wind of a transformer so this leakage flux we are representing with a scatter leakage here the same manner when the sinusoidal current is passing through the rotor bar there some amount of flux will be leaking and linking with the own turn that physical phenomena that we represented with a leakage reaction of a rotor bar so the rotor has a two parameters one is the rotor resistance another one is the rotor leakage reaction so the scatter winding has also the two parameters one is the scatter resistance another one is the scatter leakage reaction the two voltages are experiencing in the scatter one is the supply voltage another one is the the self induced voltage in a scatter winding due to the scatter flux the rotor only one voltage is experiencing that is the the voltage induced in rotor bars due to the rotating flux what is the principle is governing the operation of a transformer the same principle also will be applied for the next motor that's why we simply call it as a induction motor is nothing but a secondary rotating winding transformer in the next class we are going to see how do you develop the phasor diagram of induction motor at a chassis condition as well as a running condition so by that time all these parameters very very important for developing the phasor diagram of induction motor thank you very much if you have any doubt you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box of my youtube channel so that i am always welcome to answer all your